Hello. We're going to do a crayon resist watercolor train. So this is a watercolor technique that uses regular crayons and generally you use white crayons and it lets you do a painting that has edges on it. So in this previous version we did pen and ink with watercolor where we drew with the pen and ink and then we painted inside the pen and ink lines we drew. So in this kind of painting you, there's no edge for the watercolor to go on. We could just go over the ink lines if we wanted to because ink doesn't stop it in any way. But when you do a crayon resist watercolor and put crayon on those edges, it actually forms a barrier. It forms a line because that wax is something that repels water. And that gives it a cool edged effect. So crayons have a fair amount of thickness to them, as you probably know as you've <laughs> drawn with crayons. So they aren't very pointy. Even if you try to make it to a point, it tends not to be very pointy. So you can't make lots of little detailed shapes with the crayon in general. So where we can do fairly detailed things with the pen and ink, we're going to do far less detailed work with the crayon resist. So to do this, we've got some watercolor paper. This happens to be Canson watercolor paper, but you can use whatever kind of watercolor paper you want to use. I'll put this guy over here for now. Got some cat hairs on it because there are cat hairs on everything here. But it's just a fact of life. And I think I will start again with my tracing paper. So previously I had started with a picture from Pixabay, which is spelled P-I-X-A-B-A-Y dot com is a site that has lots of copyright free, royalty free, free to use for anything artwork that you can use as a starting point. So I went to pixabay.com. I got an image of a train that I made a little larger for this purpose. And then I traced it. So I traced this image onto tracing paper, which is just very thin paper. And then you can use graphite paper as a way to transfer that image down onto a new surface. So graphite paper is simply regular paper, or I suppose thin paper, that has a layer of graphite on it, which is the black stuff in pencils. Pencils don't have lead in them, they have graphite. So we're going to tape down the graphite paper to the watercolor paper. And then I'm going to choose to put the train this way because I like things going to the right. Most people in Western reading states tend to go left to right because that's the way that we learn to read. Our letters go left to right. So we'll put that in the middle and we will tape that down. If you want to draw your train freehand, you are welcome to do that. And if you go on Pixabay, you can see the exact train that I am working with and make your own copy. So we got our train image down. I'm going to trace this. I'm going to trace this fairly quickly. I've done a separate video on the slow tracing process if you need to see that. But now I just want to get this down so that we can go on to the crayon resist. So again, it's important to remember when you're doing crayon resist that you are drawing with the point of a crayon. <laughs> which is generally not the most pointy kind of drawing implement in the world. So you want to have lines that are fairly large and easy to trace. You're not going to get a lot of really fine detail in there unless you have some special crayons which give you a lot of detailed parts. So like even some of these little sections in here are going to be tricky to manage with the crayon. But we will see what we can do. So I won't try to do the little tiny windows. I'll do this big shape here. I'll try this one. If it doesn't work, that's okay. 
a large part of art is accepting that things don't always go the way that you would think they would go, and that is all right. Big wheels. Big wheels keep on turning. There are just so many songs about traveling. I think it is a fairly common interest of people to travel and see things. And trains definitely made that possible. Back in an era where people were stuck walking everywhere. So imagine a world where the only things that you could see were things that you could personally walk to. It would greatly reduce the number of places you went to. <laughs> Probably gotten a little spoiled nowadays with so many people having cars and having access to planes and so on. Maybe even able to go places far more easily. Alright, so I've traced this out. Peel off the tracing paper. Tracing paper can be used and reused and reused as many times as you want to. You just store it in a file folder. And peel off the graphite paper. And again, the graphite paper can be used and reused and reused bunches of times because there is so much graphite on here that just making one drawing or two drawings out of it doesn't really degrade its ability to keep being used. So I made two images now about this graphite paper and it's still quite fine to make bunches more. All right, so here we go. We've got a general basic shape of the train. I did this quick and rough so that we could get through this. And now we're going to do the crayon part. So if you have a crayon sharpener, you can sharpen the crayon to make it really pointy. What I'm going to do is use the back edge of the crayon, which is still fairly sharp there, and be able to draw with that. So you won't be able to see how this is drawing because it's going to be white on white, which is part of the point of this. The crayon ends up being pretty much invisible, but it is creating a solid wax layer that watercolor paint will not stick to. I suppose more specifically, the water that is holding the watercolor paint will not stick to. So when the watercolor paint is put down on the paper, it will soak into the paper, but it will be resisted by the wax. And this wax area will not get paint into it. All right, so we're just tracing the pencil lines with the crayon. And again, the reason I'm using the back of the crayon is because that has a reasonably sharp edge. And I don't have a sharpener right here to make that into a sharper edge. I imagine that many people with crayons have crayon sharpeners. I actually have a pencil sharpener over here, and I'm not sure how well it would work on the crayon. And this works, so I'm going with what works. I 
All right, so finer details like this whistle are just not going to be, or even this bell, <laughs> not going to be very bell specific in there. So part of the interest for me with this crayon resist is that crayon is not a precise drawing instrument in general. The wax has all sorts of little nooks and crannies in its design and that creates a neat effect for the watercolor that goes up against it. So I like that imperfection of it, which I suppose is also why I like that type of watercolor shape, the way that things are just blowy and different shapes. That sort of stuff appeals to me. So some people like to do very precise paintings in oil, and that is wonderful. That's one style of painting. This would be for a less precise style of painting. If you're more interested in things sort of flowing where they want to flow, lines being wiggly, and so on. All right, so it's hard to see, but if you hold the paper up against the light and move it around, you can see a shininess where the crayon is. And you want to check your painting at this stage to make sure you've got all the lines that you wanted to get. Because if you missed something and then you start painting, then that area will not resist because there will not be any wax there. I put in little blocks where the panes are. And I'll put in spokes. Again, I'm just doing this quick and rough so you get a sense of how this works. shape over here. Try to put a little snowflake hint of a shape. But again, you have to accept with crayon resist that you're going to have a not as much attention to detail in here, let's say, because the crayon is fairly thick. I think I've gotten everything with the crayon. We will find out later if I missed anything when it does not resist. And it sort of looks like I've gotten everything. All right. So this time, instead of painting the background and everything, I'm just going to go right for the train itself so that we and get through this more quickly. And we're going to do this wet on dry, so we're just going to paint on the dry paper with a wet brush. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Now let's make a red train this time. So again, you want to start with the lighter areas. So we'll go with red and yellow. Make the lighter areas yellow. And a little snowflake. So the snowflake won't have a very detailed snowflake aspect to it. But that is all right. With crayon resist, you tend to go more abstract. 
because of the way the crayon works. So you can still see the pencil, and that's okay. It tends to be fairly dark in this situation because I made it nice and dark so that you could see what I was doing. When you do it yourself, it's going to tend to be lighter, and that's a normal part of watercolor paintings. You can often see the pencil marks when you're looking at watercolor paintings, and it's just the way that watercolor paintings present themselves. So you can sort of see where I get close to the edges here that even if I try to paint over here it resists back. It falls back away from the crayon because the water that I'm painting with will not stick to the crayon areas. So that is the crayon resist effect that we're going for. So even if I tried to paint past this I would keep running into that crayon area. So, I don't, again, it's sort of hard for you to see, but when I'm painting towards that side there, which is on my left, the paint is actually stopping. It is hitting that crayon barrier and it's stopping. And the same thing when I'm going this way towards the window, the paint is stopping all on its own because it's running into that wax barrier. And over here, I drew four windows with the white crayon, so you can't really see them, but there's four window areas right there. And if I paint over, see how the paint does not stick to those window areas? So this is a fun technique for an artist to do on their own, and it's also a nice technique if you're working with someone who has uh, just learning to paint or having some challenges painting, you can have someone who is better at painting draw things for them with crayon, and then when that person paints they'll have all these kinds of things happen. And it can even be fun if you drew something for them on a white piece of paper, they wouldn't necessarily even be able to see what the shapes were, and they could just start painting over it in random colors and then the shape would appear as if by magic. So that's a fun thing to do. Red nose like Rudolph. So it's a different technique from pen and ink. With pen and ink, there's no physical barrier to the water. It's just you and your hand staying on the inside of the pen and ink. With crayon resist, there is a physical barrier here. So as I'm coming up against these inner vents of the cow catcher, the water is actually staying away from those holes because that's where I put the crayon. And these wheels, these spokes are done with crayon, so when I get to those wheel parts, the spokes are going to resist the paint all by themselves. And as I paint this square design area, I'm coming up against the four edges of the box I drew, and the watercolor ink is just naturally stopping at that point. So, a fun technique to play with. Let's see how it works.
And again, all the other usual techniques apply. So if we wanted to do a wet on wet background to make a soft fuzzy background, we could. If we wanted to do layers upon layers of color, we could. Let's give us a little bottom area. So the more different techniques you learn about and play with, the more kinds of art you can create. Alright, let's give it some black coal. Ask if you have any questions about how this works. So all sorts of fun projects you can do with Crayon Resist. But I don't know if you can see the way that that paint just went right up around the wheel. That's because that wheel was drawn with crayon. Or even around the edge of the uh, red design here. I'm just dragging the brush and I don't have to be too precise because the crayon is guiding where the paint can go and where it can't go. Now if I went too wild and went right out into the outside, the outside doesn't have crayon on it so it would let the paint stick there. So as long as I stay reasonably within the bounds, see I can't go any higher because the crayon there is forming a barrier. If I painted in the center area, it would stick because that area has the just the paper without the crayon on it. And I don't know if you can see inside the wheels, but I made a quick little spoke drawing and I did it fairly light, so there's just a hint of spokes in there. But it is up to you how light or dark you want to do your crayon part. If you want to make the lines thick or thin or so on. So crayon resist is quite a fun style of painting to do. And again, I know it's a little hard to see since the crayon is white and the paper is white, but hopefully you get a sense of how this is working. How that white crayon that we put down earlier is forming a barrier. So see, in this area here, I trace that decorative line with crayon and see how when I paint over it, see how the paint does not stick to that decorative line area? So it creates a natural white ridge. And you can still see the pencil, but that is all right. to the center of the screen. Right, a little black for this area over here. darker. <laughs> now you're in the realm of just 
playing with things to make things a little darker, a little brighter, a little more shadow, or all those other kinds of details. So hopefully you got the general gist of how this technique works. So, car this was quick and easy. I could work on this for more hours if I wanted to and put in a background and put in different layers of shading and all that other kind of stuff. But to summarize the basics, I got a pencil version down onto the piece of watercolor paper. I happen to use tracing paper and graphite to do that, but you can draw it freehand if you want, whatever works well for you. And then once the pencil version was down, and again, the benefit of doing it with pencil first is that you can erase the pencil if you need to and make changes and so on. And once you get the pencil version down, then you take a crayon and you want a reasonably sharp crayon. So if you have a crayon sharpener around, that's a good thing to use. A white crayon is best because then it's invisible against the paper. So you take a crayon and you trace over all the lines in your original pencil drawing. And keep in mind that the crayon is reasonably thick, so you won't be able to get teeny little details, but you should be able to get most of the details in. And then once the crayon is down, anywhere that there is crayon, the paint will not stick. And it will stick places that are just paper. So now when you paint over it, like the edge of this red area was all crayon, and you can see it's sort of wiggly. Let's see if I can hold this up a little closer. Let me see if we can do this without tipping the tripod over. <laughs> All right, so I will try holding this up. All right, so I think you can see there that the crayon edges are wriggly, just to the nature of how crayons work. And I like that wriggly soft effect. I like the way it looks. This is a perfect look for children's books or that sort of thing. So you make the edges with your crayon your white crayon, so you're tracing over the pencil. And then you paint in with watercolor. And when you're painting in with the watercolor paint, the watercolor paint will resist going to anywhere that the crayon is, because the crayon is wax, and wax and water don't mix well. So that way, the places that you put the crayon stay white, and then you put the paint in the other places, and it creates a neat overall effect. So ask if you have any questions about the wax crayon resist watercolor painting style. And you can use this with pretty much any kind of topic you want. Let's see if I have one of the other ones around here to show you. Alright, so here's a turtle that I did with that style. Draw around the edges of the turtle and then paint in the middle and it creates a fun effect with the white spaces in there. Right. Ask with any questions, and I hope you have fun doing crayon-resist watercolor paintings.